Hey everyone, this is Frank Klesitz with Viral Marketing. I want to welcome you to a real estate client interview today with Jose. He is up in Ventura area in uh, still Southern California, but the northern yeah, part is. of Southern California. Yeah. Uh, been a client for many years here at Viral. Uh -huh. And he started off uh, as a salesperson, a uh, mm -hmm. very productive individual sales agent. Mm -hmm. And through that journey, you are scaling up. And you have to start implementing systems in your business. You have to start mm -hmm. getting some procedures in place beyond just you hitting phones and following up with leads and making presentations to mm -hmm. leverage yourself. And viral was one of those systems you put in place. And what's really great, I'll just get right to the point. I mean, you can uh -huh. track, you said here, you can track about forty to $50,000 in commission a year from viral. Yeah. From the $6,600 a year it costs you for the five yeah, yeah, months. Of course. Uh-huh. And that's what you can track. And you that's what I can track, yeah. Other benefits. So it makes business yeah, sense to you to do this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to get into, in the story today, we're going to get into uh, what you're doing with us and the viral mm -hmm. marketing plan of asking for emails and sending out videos mm -hmm. and prioritize follow-up to get that ROI for people mm -hmm. that aren't seeing ROI from viral. But mm -hmm. I, want to, I want that story in the context. I want that, that, um, those tactics in the context of the story today of how you're kind of scaling up your business from being a real estate producer to more towards a business owner. Yeah, That's of course. A very interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Cool, man. So you sold about 250 homes in your career. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. In 2017, you sold 109 homes. Yep. Average price point in your market is about 520,000. Mm -hmm. GCI, GCI over a little million bucks, which is fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Congratulations <laughs> on that, man. Uh-huh. And uh, to date, sold about 45 homes. Is that correct? Yeah. Good for you, buddy. All right. So <clears throat> your goal here is to get to 300 transactions. Maybe yeah. a big goal. We got to put a lot of systems in place. So let's just start back with the story. I think what the audience will find is I want to hear kind of how you transitioned to get to that point. Because mm -hmm. your business has been taking off quite considerably. Yeah. Where maybe a lot of your peers are in that are kind of staying at the same levels. Yeah. So let's figure out why yours is taking off and maybe theirs yeah. is staying the same of what your insights are. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the beginning of the story. You get involved in real estate. You get involved with a coaching program that teaches you how to sell. What did you do every day in that phase of your business? Tell me about that entry level phase where you are the producer to sell houses. What did you do? I prospected every day. So I basically prospected four, five, six hours a day. And I worked on my skills. I practiced a lot. So I, almost like a professional athlete, you have to uh, practice hitting a baseball or practice your free throws. I spent a considerable amount of time practicing so that my conversion rate uh, levels can, can get better. So what ended up happening over time is I had to talk to a lot less people and be able to convert at a, at a much higher rate. But the, the thing is that once I got started, Frank, I always knew that I wanted something big. So I, everything from the beginning, even when I started prospecting, I was already thinking about like, okay, eventually I'm going to do a hundred deals. Eventually I'm going to do 300. Eventually I'm going to do a thousand. So what systems would I have to put in place so that I can spend more time prospecting and making more phone calls to get more business to free up my time. So I started delegating a lot of stuff from the very beginning to be able to, 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 to envision myself producing a lot more than what I was doing at the time. So you, two key things you said here is that you spent most of your day finding business. Of course. Yeah. Making lots of phone calls and speaking a lot of them, lots yeah. of people, a lot of people and probably falling on your face many times and really oh, yeah. working on what you're going to say. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And immediately you had a vision that you wanted to build something great. So as you quickly as possible, I'm hearing you, you started, you started delegating the Thanks. administrative side of the business. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how many years would you say that took and what years were that of you just being the rainmaker and getting some assistance? So I started off with virtual assistance at the very beginning um, to delegate things. Um, I probably got my first actual assistant maybe like two, three years into the business. Um, she started answering a lot of the calls for a lot of the listings that we were taking. But before that, when, when I got started, I didn't have the money to, to hire a full-time assistant. So I started delegating a lot of things to virtual uh, people, little tasks that would take up a, a lot of time and that uh, were time consuming, but were very repetitive and somebody else can do them. So that was really helpful for me at that point in my career. 
Good. So you started with some contract help to help you. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, that were very routine tasks. Mm -hmm. But you just focused. I mean, give me in a typical day for those of you, for someone watching that's not familiar with six hours of prospecting, what? Like, what, yeah. even, what even is that? What does uh, that mean? So let's just kind of focus on maybe that side of the audience here. Can you explain to me what six hours a day of prospecting actually entails? Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> so I would get into the office at 7.30 in the morning. Um, I would practice from 7 to 7 or 7.30 to 8 o'clock every single morning from 8 to 12 or 8 to 11.30. Um, I would prospect and then I would practice again at 11.30. Then I take a lunch break. Then at 1, 3, and 5, I would go on appointments. And if I didn't have any appointments, I would get back on the on on the phones and make more phone calls so i would make phone calls in the morning and then if i didn't have any appointments i would make phone calls in the afternoon and then over time once seven o'clock eight o'clock came i would work on systems in the after after prospecting hours so i a lot of people i noticed that they'll try to work on systems but they give up the prospecting so they're giving up the now income obviously to set up the future income. But what I did from the very beginning is I wanted the now income, but I also wanted the future business. So I just put in a lot of overtime at the very beginning. I would set up systems eight to 10 at night. I wasn't married at the time. So I was able to, to do yeah. a lot of, no, it's true. a lot of things, you know? So, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So all day long making calls, going on appointments, focusing on prospecting, lead follow up presentations and negotiation. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you would, do whatever you could to outsource or delegate the administrative systems, yeah. size of the business. Uh -huh. And at night you're constantly working on systems. Yeah. Yeah. Let me go a little deeper on this. Give me mm -hmm. some idea of like who you're calling and how many dials you'd make and how many contacts a day. And yeah. Give me some of the ideas of some of the first systems you started documenting and getting off your plate at night. Yeah. So uh, like I would call expireds, I would call for sale by owners, the traditional, I would call it just listed. I think at the very beginning, I, one of the very first things that I got was a CRM and I would call, I would call my past clients a lot or even my sphere of influence, people that I, that I knew in town. So what I did when I transitioned into real estate is I took my phone book and I exported that list and picked out, okay, who likes me, who knows me and who would be probable to do business with me. And then I would just call them and give them a market update. I'd say, Hey, I just got into the business. Um, it's a good time to buy. Have you ever considered purchasing a property or what are your plans for purchasing a property? So at first, a lot of my business came from my database, but at that point it was a lot of buyers. And then I transitioned into the expired for sale by owner, just listed, just sold. Uh, eventually I started adding business owners to my database. So strategically adding different people that could potentially would refer would potentially refer me and do business with me. So we strategically started adding people after some point. How in the world did you grow to just be on the phone and just call all these people? Like mm -hmm. that's terrifying for a lot of people. How, How did, did you I just naturally just like just naturally do that? Without any problem? No, no, it was painful, man. It was it was painful at the beginning, but the thing is that what helps is knowing what to say. I think that if you don't know what to say, I remember my very first cold call ever. I, I, I didn't know any scripts. I didn't know anything. Somebody said, Hey, call in expired. I remember pulling it up on the MLS, looking up the owner's phone number and I called them and I probably didn't make another cold call for, for the, another six months, but I didn't know what to say. I didn't know. So I, I think that a lot of people fear it just because they don't practice or they don't know what to say. But once you know what to say, it becomes like, they all say the same thing, Frank. They're all going to tell you, like, bring me a buyer. They're all going to tell you, I've already got an agent. They're all going to tell you, I'm not ready to do something right now. They're all going to tell you, how much commission do you charge? They're all going to tell you, I'm going to do it on my own. So once you learn what to say and how to say it, it makes it a lot easier for you to, 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 to do that. And, and the only way to really get there is by practicing. Practicing with other people that are already doing that and learning off of them and spending a large quantity of your time practicing, not just making a lot of phone calls, but actually taking the time to, to practice a lot. So I practiced a lot. I wanted that to be my competitive advantage, my skills, the way that I communicated with people. 
I wanted that. I, I did it. I wanted to be elegant in the way that I communicate with people, but still be a salesperson at, at the same time. That's great. How yeah. many people a week would you say you spoke with about real estate at that point? Uh, I think at some point I was making over a thousand contacts a month at some point, like very early on in my career. I didn't have anything else to do. Like I didn't have business at that point. Like I, I went from like nine deals a year to like 20 deals a year to like 37 to like 49 to like 53 and then like 109. Like, so it was, it was like at the very beginning, it, it wasn't that much like I didn't have anything else to do. And then I was pretty disciplined, you know, like I didn't go out to eat. I pre-planned all my meals. So I would eat at the office. Like I had, I followed a schedule. Like I followed a schedule, like almost like, uh, like if I, if I had an, in a boss, like if a boss told me, Jose, you got to come in at seven 30 every day from seven 30 to eight, you got to practice from eight o'clock to 11 30. You got to make phone calls at 11 30. You're going to practice again, 12 to one. I would eat lunch and then take maybe like an hour break three, one o'clock, three o'clock. You're either going to go on appointments or you're going to get back on the phone. So I treated it like, like basically like if somebody else, was my boss telling me, this is your schedule. This is what you have to do. Otherwise you're fired. So that's the mentality, the mindset that I went into it. That's a pretty rare mindset to be able yeah. to self motivate yourself like that. I'm just, I'm just curious, where does that drive come from? Um, I don't know. I, th I think for me is recognition. I, 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 I wanted like, like from the beginning, I wanted to be the number one agent in my marketplace. Like I've got a dream board back here. It was from 2015 and it says number one agent in Ventura County. And right now, all of my listings say number one in Ventura County because I was the number one listing agent in Ventura County. So I think that that, that's, that, that was a, a part of it. Um, now I'm, I'm more driven by giving back and, and contributing. So um, I'm, a little bit more focused on, on, on giving back. But the first part was just, I, I wanted to produce a lot. Yeah. I don't, I, I, I and I, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder. I, I wasn't like the greatest student in school. I wasn't like the greatest, um, like, uh, I used to party a lot. So like my family did not like when I got into the business, a lot of them didn't think that I would actually make it because of the lifestyle that I had prior to getting into the business. So I felt that that was like a little bit of a, a chip and I wanted to prove everybody that not only was I going to make it, but I was going to make it big, like, yeah. like big, you know? Yeah. So I think cool. the, part of that was, well, it's good for people to hear that, man. I mean, I mean, come on for someone to, to do that. There's a very driving reason. That's like, it's an interesting question. Thanks for sharing that. So, all right. So you're just crushing calls, going mm -hmm. on appointments, doing a great job selling outsourced administrative side of your business. And let's call that phase one, uh -huh. becoming a great salesperson that has some business skill to leverage administrative stuff, mm -hmm. right? Then this next phase happens, which I'll call maybe the, uh, the kind of the ramping up and spending more money essentially, uh -huh. right? Um, tell me about this need for the second phase and where you were at where you had to like start bringing on more systems and you wanted to grow now to the next, next uh, phase of your business. What, what was that? What did that look like? And tell me that next step. So I'll, I'll tell you where to start it. Um, I went to a seminar and you know, Greg Harrelson, right? I do. He was one of the panelists on there and it was a uh, seminar for Mike, Mike Ferry. And he was uh, talking about prospecting and he said, okay, how many contacts does it take you to get a listing appointment? And it was like 120, 130 at that time. He says, okay, so out of 120, you're going to get 119 no's and you're going to get one yes. He says, what are you doing with the other 119 people that say no to you? Are you kind of just saying, okay, on to the next one? Or are you taking the time to gather their email, send them something of value, and then, um, and then, uh, and then build a long-term database? So that, that's where I started thinking about, okay, like that, make, that made crystal clear sense to me. He said, I talked to 120 people. One of them's going to say yes. What happens to the 119? I said, great. I'll start collecting all of their emails and then eventually I'll implement something like viral where I can send them something of value. And this was something that in my market, nobody was doing at that time. Nobody uh, was, everybody was just 
I'll make 120 contacts, I'll get one yes, and that's it. I wanted to stay in front of all of the people that said no to me, and I wanted to provide value and build some sort of relationship where I was the where I was the most knowledgeable person that they knew. So that was one of the um, that was one of the first systems. Uh, the way I looked at it is okay. It's going to cost me six thousand dollars a year or whatever it cost me at that time. If I can make more than six thousand dollars a year, if I can double my money, triple my money, quadruple my money. It's not going to change anything that I was already doing. I was already making the phone calls. All I had to do was ask for an email address. Once I got the email address, I was already doing videos, so I just had to send them something of value. So, um, so that, that, that's where that it, one little switch of just asking for an email address and return for something of value made a pretty big impactful impact on your business. It didn't really cost you any much more. Well, it, it wasn't really a big, it was something that I was already doing. I was already making the phone calls. So why not eventually uh, like keep in front of all these people? Like I know I, I, I was a business major. I took marketing and I know that sometimes staying in front of people is, is, is what it takes. Like, I mean, like people mail to them. Uh, some people visit them at parties. I felt that gathering the email at a fixed cost was a very easy way that I can grow that email list to 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. My cost is not going to change. It's still going to be 550. If I want to mail to somebody, if I want to grow the list from 500 to 1,000, it's going to double my cost. It's going to triple my cost yeah. if I want to keep growing it. By emails, it was just something that it was fixed cost and I can grow it as large as I, I want, I want to grow it. And it didn't change anything that I was already doing. So that was, that was, uh, it made sense in my head. So how many of your contacts now, roughly how many people a week would you say you're adding to your database from your prospecting by offering um, a subscription to your, uh, your videos, your newsletter? I'd probably say even with incoming leads, cause our incoming leads get our videos as well too. I'd probably say our email list. And this is kind of me just throwing out a number, maybe grows by like a, maybe like 50 to a hundred a month. It doesn't, it's not like, like huge, but it does grow. And then you always get people that unsubscribe for whatever reason, you know, so it's just, it's a numbers game, just like anything else. So why viral? So of the systems you needed to implement, you needed to have some type of long-term nurture campaign mm -hmm. for you to stay in touch with people along many other systems. But, you know, there's lots of other places you could have spent your money mm -hmm. to touch your list. Mm -hmm. What stood out about the option that you have with us? Uh, number one is I could I, I could provide value via video. Um, number two is people would get to know me because it was a video. And if they watched it, they can uh, get to know the way that I think about things and the way that I care about my customers. Number three is I get an opening click report, meaning that I could actually call the people that are clicking on my links yep. on my on my website. So what stood out about that is I could actually call people at the right time instead of calling people randomly. If I see that somebody's clicking on my last three videos, I can call them and say, Hey, look, Jose Morales, how can I help you? Um, so I, I think that stood out. Um, the fact that, uh, the cost didn't increase. If I increase my, uh, database that, that was, a, I wanted to maintain that, that it didn't get, at that point in my business, extremely large. So that was helpful. The fact that the cost stayed the same as well. Yeah. Good. yeah. Good. Okay. So you basically, if I understand this right, is you schedule uh -huh. one appointment a month to record two videos. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me about the recording process of how much time this takes? Because your time is very valuable uh -huh. and you don't want to have this suck up a lot of your time because you can be on the phones prospecting, making, making it rain, right? Yeah. But tell me how you go about shooting your videos and maybe how you come about with your topics. After doing this for quite some time, you probably have some pretty good ideas of what to say. Why don't you share with the audience the process of shooting the videos and some tips as well as some tips to come up with the topic ideas that actually work. So for me, uh, I actually don't set time aside for shooting the videos. I do the videos whenever I feel like it almost. So, um, I probably produce a lot more videos that go out, but I go on Facebook live all the time. Like right before our interview, I did two videos 
talking about my principles in real estate investing, what the, the, the 10 principles that I do when invest in real estate. And we send those videos to viral. Viral turns it into a video that I can send out. Oh, to so my, you, go right, you go live right on Facebook live. I go live download, on Facebook. We download the video from Facebook live and get it out. Yeah. Yeah. Jose, I, I love it. And I do a lot. So I, I, I like, like I had a 10, 20 minute gap from my previous appointment to yours. I said, great. I wrote out 10 principles for real estate investment today. I'm going to do a Facebook live video. Then viral, uh, takes that video, produces into content and just sends it out. So for me, it's, it's more of, uh, um, I only do the video. I don't set the time aside. I actually do the videos just when, when I, when, when I'm feeling inspired, like for example, like let's say that I have a conversation with you mm-hmm. and we, and, and, and whatever that conversation gets me like really excited, like boom, this is a perfect time for me to do a video. I'll jump on there and I'll talk about whatever it is that our conversation was. Like if a client asked me, Jose, should I, uh, sell my home and buy something or should I sell my home or should I rent my home and buy something, which is better. And then I'll have that conversation with the client and then I'll just jump right on a video. I'll be like, great. So I just got done talking to a client. He asked me whether I should sell, whether he should sell his home and buy or rent his home and buy. So what we ended up doing is we ended up uh, going over the numbers. If he sold it, how much would his new payment be? If he rented it out, how much would his payment be and how much he could collect in rent? And we analyzed it uh, to see which made the most sense. If you are looking to buy or sell or you're considering maybe selling and buying or renting and buying, then give me a call. I'd be happy to help. And that's my video for the day. Yeah. You know what? Um, one of the messages you're going to see at Viral is we're going to be taking more of our clients live on Facebook uh-huh. because the reach you get is so much more going live, as you know now. You mm-hmm. get the comments and everything. Yeah. And then we're taking our clients to get them comfortable. We interview you on Facebook live and then uh-huh. we download the video and edit it, promote it and all the rest of the processes. Yeah. So good for you, man. That's great. Yeah. It works out for me. Good. I like doing it when I feel like doing it. When I, yeah, when I get, get the creative it. inspiration. hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah. As and opposed you, to that when I have to. It, yeah. And you're kind of doing it out and about, I would assume. Yeah. yeah. Wherever exactly. it's at. Oh, yeah. that's great. And good for you. So we edit these, we promote them, we optimize them, we get them out for you. It's all handled. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, how do you know that people are watching these and how do you know like anyone cares and how do you know like this is pretty- Well, you get an open and click report, you know, and you get to see how many people. So what I did with that open and click report um, is I actually uh, put it on an Excel sheet. That way I can see it very easily from month to month. If, the, if it's growing, if it's de- decreasing, I get to see the topics as well too. I think you guys provide us with those numbers, uh, yeah. certain, certain mm, topics, uh, have more open and clicks. Uh, certain ones have lower, so you get to adjust your videos based on that. Mm-hmm. What's also pretty cool is the the seller lead generation emails that you guys send out. Those are those always produce a lot of um, a lot of inquiries. What's good about it is that people actually think that I'm the one writing it. So, but I, I'm not because I mean, for me, the amount that I'm paying viral for them to handle everything. I could make a lot more money on the phones, you know, so yep. I can make a lot more money making phone calls or getting in front of everybody. So you can't do it all. So you have to pick your battles and know that your time has a certain value. So, so what Jose is saying here is he sends two educational videos a month to his list, mm-hmm. but every three months or so, three to four months, we like to send like a direct offer out to the list. Like kind of like tells them mm-hmm. to take action right now or yeah. to go request their free home value report. Yeah. And those are just like kind of plain text emails. Yep. And those sent on the foundation of your videos. Yep. Work very well, don't they? Oh, because big time. hundred percent. Spike, spike response. Those are, yeah, they're written well. You get replies like people saying, Oh, great. Jose, this is great information. I'm actually considering selling. So it's it just another way, like, um, like for somebody that maybe is considering viral, but maybe doesn't have the money. What I did at the very beginning is I just started collecting emails, knowing that eventually I was going to do something with it, collecting, collecting. And then when I had the resources, I've jumped right in, you know, and then it, 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 I wouldn't look at it as a cost. I would look at it as an investment and investments where you invest money and you get a positive return on your investment. That's what, that's the way I would look at it as opposed to a cost. Good. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. It's a good investment. I like that. It's a good investment, you know? Good. Well, um, one of the things I just want to kind of throw out an idea to you, I mean, you're doing some pretty good business, man. Have you thought about ever bringing on a, uh, a sponsor? 
to help maybe offset half the cost of viral, which would double theoretically your ROI? Mm. I've, I've thought about it. I, the way I've ran my business and uh, with B school with Lars, like they, they talk a lot about that. I, I, I haven't done it yet. I've, I've never asked anybody for, for, for money to split it. it I, I just haven't done it. Um, a lot of my expenses are offset by rental properties that I own. Yeah. Uh, I make a decent amount on rental income every month, but eventually that is the plan. I just, for whatever reason, um, just I, 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 I haven't done it yet. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. But um, just something to think about. You do a consider business like a uh, property management company, a uh, contractor. Yeah. You know, someone who does painting. It doesn't have to even be someone on the, on the settlement sheet. So you don't have to worry about free recommendations or any rest of stuff. It could just be some other random business that would love to partner up. Yeah. Someone that is talking to all these homeowners in Ventura County that would love to say, like, man, you need some pretty sweet exposure. If maybe you include them in some of your videos, include a little blurb on your website, something like that. Yeah. Just Promoting about. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Just even just one person. That would double the ROI, like you it said. Would, yeah, it would <laughs> double your return investment if one person paid half the thing. I did think about it that way. That's a good way to think yeah, about it. <laughs> I think two seventy five a month because you pay five fifty a month is a very reasonable spend to ask anyone. Of course, yeah. Um, we have clients. Um, for what it's worth, is uh, we have many clients getting several thousands. Uh, right. One, uh, Chris Waters, one of our clients in Austin, Texas. He's the yeah. author of a book, right? Of yeah, building the, a the billion billion, dollar yeah. real estate team. I helped him yeah. write it. And oh, nice. uh, yep, I interviewed him at my, at my house for 11 hours to help with the ghostwriting uh, transcript. Mm. And um, he gets over 25000 a month from local businesses. Wow. To help offset his ad spend. He has about 25, 26 different local businesses that pay him an amount of money every month. And he co-promotes them in his marketing. Mm-hmm. And um, he gets them together once a month for like a mastermind to share ideas, which is the glue that holds it all together. That's great. That, that allowed him to spend a lot of money on lead gen. Oh, yeah. Um, without having to take the risk. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah. Just an option for you. I, I, I just think if, if you have the focus, it might be something we'll look maybe possibly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Doing. So good, man. So let's see here. So what are your current challenges in your business now? What's next for you? What are you working on? Um, so for right now, I uh, th- there's pretty limited inventory and there's a lot of agents in the marketplace. So what, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to tag our database. So um, we use real geeks and uh, we're just going to tag them. Like, like if somebody says, Hey, I would sell, but only if I found this type of property, we're going to start tagging uh, people. Basically hey, this person is looking for this type of property. This person has this type of property and start matching up off the market deals as well too. We've been able to put a couple deals that are off the market this year with no systems. So if we actually implement those systems, we have a little bit more control and we offer value as well too. You know, we're offering value because we're able to find somebody like you an off the market deal where maybe there's not a lot of competition. And for some homeowners, we're able to sell their property sometimes without ever coming on the marketplace if that's what they want. So I would say that that's, that's, um, that's something that we're working on. Um, the other thing is uh, we, we, we do very little advertising, like very little. Um, so eventually we're going to get more um, advertised uh, prospecting, but still have some marketing to support it. So basically viral is what we do. We'll probably end up getting like into radio with stuff. My parents uh, have a partnership with a local radio station. So. Yeah, um, one of the best things with radio is to have the morning AM drive person that has a relationship with their audience for the longest period of time uh, for an endorsement where they give like a live read or mm. a read about you in the morning is worked incredibly well. That's great. Yeah. 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 So just I would say a little bit more. Uh, we're going to do a lot more marketing uh, coming into the future in order to scale up, in order to take it from 100 to 300. Um, yeah, good for you. That's yeah. great, man. So are you recruiting agents to your team? I mean, why don't you tell me how your team is structured right now? So uh, last year there was two buyer's agents. This year we have three. Um, And uh, it's me as the listing agent. Then my wife is the listing coordinator. And then we have a, uh, oh no, my wife's the closing coordinator now. Uh, And then we have a listing coordinator as well too. So we have two admin, one of them, my wife. And then the, uh, we did all the production with two agents last year. And, uh, this year we added in another one. Um, I've been pretty blessed 
in terms of recruiting because because I, I do Facebook live videos or I'm out there and people know that I produce, people have actually come to me. I actually have a lot of people that come to me and say, hey, Jose, I want to work on your team. Um, but uh, until I set up certain systems, I don't feel comfortable. I want to make sure that everybody on the team produces and yeah. makes money as opposed to just adding people for the sake of adding people. I'm not. Jose, you, yeah. got, a good head, you got a good head on your shoulders, man. You're doing this right. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you haven't gotten out of the listing side of the business. You've maintained control of that. You're incredibly profitable, I would assume. Oh, yeah. Big you time. Know, you have, <laughs> <laughs> Big time. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. No, seriously. Yeah. People need to hear this. Like, you're making all these calls. You, you, you built it. You outsourced the administrative side, which is uh -huh. the first step. You got rid of the buyers and shuffling them around every single where. Uh -huh. right? So you have a team that helms with the buyers, and you're focusing on what controls the market, which is the listings, which is a prospecting dominant and enhanced yeah. with a low cost viral that no matter how many people you send me, your price doesn't go up. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's pretty much the majority of your stuff. And the next step right for now. you is, you know, the next step for you is what are you going to do with your listing agents? Are you going to run a prospecting based team like Greg, or are you going to give them a little marketing support to help get them leads and you're going to spend some cash is really where you're at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which way do you think you're going to go? You're going to train them as a, as an outbound prospecting machine with no leads. You're going to do some marketing, give them something. Do you know which way you're going to go? I think, uh, I think I'm going to do some marketing to be honest. I think like, for example, like I I've got kind of got a competitive advantage with radio with the relationship that my family has it. Yeah. So I can spend a thousand bucks on radio and run a lot of commercials. So it's going to start off with radio. Mm -hmm. And I think that radio is actually going to help out uh, or I've heard that radio actually helps out everything else that you do. Absolutely. So if it like, it just like, if, if we're prospecting, people were actually going to answer the phone. Oh, Jose Luis Morales. Oh, we've heard about you on the radio, yeah. you know? So it's going to help everybody on the team when it's just going to enhance when they see a listing of ours, when they see an open house sign of ours, mm -hmm. when they, when we call them to prospect them, radio is just going to enhance, enhance all of that. So we'll start off there. And then, um, if, if, if eventually I, I think Facebook as well too, uh, we're doing a lot of retargeting right now to, people that are visiting our website. We do that for you like here that. at Viral. Are you working with us on that? No, I actually hired a virtual assistant to, to help me with that. Um, it, they just basically installed the pixel on my website. And kind of, yeah, it's pretty, yeah. Yeah, the idea for the audience with that is that's actually included in the core fee. It's oh, perfect. Oh, it's, very, it's very simple. Uh -huh. you basically take a little piece of code that Facebook gives you when you put on your website. Mm -hmm. And you say, I want to show Facebook ads to everyone who visits my website. Yeah. And uh, for over, say, 30 days or so. And mm -hmm. let me give you a tip. The best ad you can run to those people is a straight direct offer. If you need to sell a home or you need to buy your home, I'm here to help you. Here are my reviews. Call mm -hmm. me, email me. I'm an agent. Get a hold of me. That's great. It's I've been the uh, number one performing ad that we found. Really? Like, legitimate seller leads and legitimate buyer leads aren't like taking tires or like getting a free value report or just want to search for properties. That's, that's the best. Here, let me show you an example. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, the, what I've been doing is I've just been doing like, a, we did like a cool little open house video. And I had a couple of people that have hired me recently that have said, we saw your open house video. And I'm like, great. I was about to show it to them in person. They're like, oh, we've already seen that. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's it shows up on Facebook. So here's yeah. the deal. Let me, let me show you. So retargeting is a no brainer. So we've played around with Facebook ads and like what works and what doesn't. And a lot of it's hit and miss. A lot of it's unicorns. Uh -huh. but there's one that isn't it's all the people that recently visited your website which is kind of a no-brainer right they heard you on the radio you were calling them like, yeah with your website and it's inexpensive like what five bucks a day pretty much gets you in front of everyone you need which is stupidly it's, cheap it's cheap right so yeah. i mean like you should obviously do this yeah so the question is you know what are some of the ads that you run and honestly you know one of the best ads i'd like you to think about is like a straight up right for the jugular direct offer. I am here to hire, hire me as your agent. So this is just an example of like, you're looking to buy or sell a home around Ventura. I've been doing this for a while. You can call me at this number. You can email me. You can comment on Facebook, send me your courier pigeon. I don't care. Contact me at whatever is easiest for you. And they have a little video that says like, I'm literally here to get you into a home or if you need to sell your house, I have some buyers. I can get it up the market for you. Call me. That's perfect. That's great. So I really recommend some type of like, just a get to the point ad. So mm -hmm. when someone's like, Oh, I just need to see a house, you know, sell my darn house, your ad pops up. Boom. Can you help me? Well, that's right? great. That's perfect. Especially if they've been on your website, you know, exactly. A hundred percent. It yeah. means that they're 
probably in the marketplace. So I, I would call that like a direct, clear offer to your website traffic. Yeah, that's wonderful. Okay. Yep. So think about that. That should be one of the ads you run. And then you can mm -hmm. run other ads in there too to remarket your website traffic. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Um, the other Facebook ads that we find work incredibly well now that we do not do here at Viral because it's not really our business. Uh, but just taking your listings and just boosting them out to the area because there's such low inventory. Mm -hmm. You get all these nosy homeowners and like everyone goes and opts in. And what's nice about boosting listings to neighbors because mm -hmm. neighbors want to find out what's in their neighbor's homes. Oh, of course, yeah. You get a bunch of homeowners opting in as buyer leads. Yeah. If you slow down, they're actually the right questions, they're potential sellers. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Agreed, yeah. <laughs> what else are you going to be working on? Um... Anything else? Hey, eventually, I, I like to delegate a lot of the follow-up that I do. Um, obviously, I'm, spend, I'm still spending uh, a good amount of time on the phones. Eventually, I want to be able to train somebody to do a follow-up. My ideal job would be maybe pre-qualifying somebody or having them pre-qualified, uh, showing up to the appointment and taking the yeah. listing. That would be my ideal job. My ideal job, if I can do two, four of those a week, five of those a week, I'm good. Let me, uh, let me give you some insight, maybe a tip. Yeah. So uh, Greg Harrelson, you mentioned, uh -huh. uh, he has about, I mean, the time, he has tons of agents making calls on mm -hmm. his behalf. Mm -hmm. But um, he's a very successful real estate professional. Myrtle Beach sells time. thousands of homes. Oh, yeah, he's there, a badass. Yeah. Right? But um, I asked him how he got started. And he was exactly in your position. Admin, buyers, doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So he hired two part-time college guys for minimum wage, part-time. And they would both come in, one would stand on the left, one would stand on the right. And he would say, start cold calling. And when you have somebody who's actually having a conversation, just tap me. I'm going to grab your headset and I'm going to take over the call. <laughs> That's yeah. what he did, right? And the sense they stood next to him, they got in his office environment. They, they kind of got a feel of like how you go about doing something that crazy because uh -huh. you know, you're with somebody. And they would hear you making the conversion calls and you work together and eventually they got better and better. So basically you would stand there and do your very precise follow-up while they're just making calls and left and right of you. And when you start mm -hmm. hearing them having a conversation, they would say, Hey, on, I want you to, I want you to speak with Jose, our, our, our founder. Boom. Yeah. Jump on the call. And then yeah. That way you're, yeah. you're spending your time with more with qualified people than having you just the raw leads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? I would say so. Yeah. So, um, maybe look into that. Maybe two part-time people to help you out. Yeah. Maybe Come in, make some right. phone calls, basically better my list. Yeah, 100%. so that I'm talking to people that um, are more interested or not. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's just measuring it's just measuring your talk time during the day and getting your talk time up so it's less dials and voicemail and stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Cool, well, I want to thank you so much for this interview. It's you know what's interesting. It's very simple, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's so. Simple. Yeah. It's simple, and you did it. You did it in a good order. You're profitable. Mm -hmm. You're selling a good amount of real estate. Congratulations, man. You have a good business for yourself. You should be very proud. I mean, it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Likewise, I'm sure that you're very profitable as well, too. <laughs> we have lots of clients. Uh, have, dude, what's interesting is I will say this. Um, I think when you're a rainmaker, mm. um, you should, what, keep maybe 70% of the money they say to the bottom line where 30% mm. of your business's expenses. Mm -hmm. But as you scale up, there's no way you're going to be able to keep 70% no. of the bottom line. Yeah. Ain't the margins. Happen. Yeah, but. Yep. It's, so what it's happens like a, is you get more revenue. You'll be lucky to keep 15, maybe 20% after you pay yourself a salary, that's reasonable. Yeah, but that's when that, you have to scale it up to but, like 10 yeah. million or something like that. Yeah, but the net as a percentage goes down, but mm -hmm. it's much more arguably stable because there's so much other stuff going on where you're really getting paid much more from the net for what you own and not what you do. Yeah. That's the big difference. That's great. So, anyways. That's the goal. That is the goal. Well, Jose, thank you so much for being a client. I really appreciate it, buddy. And uh, where can someone go? What's the address of your blog if they want to see all your videos? Uh, it's moralesregroup.com. They can go there and see all your stuff. Yeah, they can just click on the blog section up. If they want to follow me on Instagram. That would probably be the easiest way for us to keep in touch is just my first name, Jose Luis Morales, uh, Luis with a Z. So, yeah. Cool. Jose, thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate it. Later.